Hey Gambia, man la kunde kinde. Mangi ni kolo le right now. Man nak appreciate for you like you. Because mo am coverage bu gana yadu, ak speed bu gana gao. Harlen mo nyong walen lutah mo choose appreciate. Mangi ame nyari telefon si suma lahoy. Suma telefon bi, mungi ame the real 4G SIM card bu appreciate. Bi mungi ame 4G SIM card bu benen network. Harlen nak mo nyong dafalen speed test bi ngin gis different. Ah, ak appreciate. I have full coverage, 6 speed 45.9. Binak, I have 4.5. Lee my one and official 4G, my real 4G. The coverage is yard, ask speed is gonna go. Diga diga, gonna go. Kondo, gaul and gendem which is an official SIM card, a 4G SIM card you ask in your amalni legini. Where official goes, no one has the speed to follow. Today is the first month of Ramadan. How important is this month? Well. It is a very important month, but it is a very important moment, hours, days, and times. In the sense that it is recommended in the Holy Quran that it is the best month ever in all the 12 months. Uh, it is a month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us to repent for our sins, for all our uh, bad things that we were doing throughout the 11 months, try to repent and return to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing good things, trying to help the needy and empathizing with the suffering and supporting the orphans and giving out charities and all what not. It is a very important month. Repent, return, and giving out charity. What is expected of an adult Muslim in this holy month? Well, at all, adult Muslim, what is expected? In the sense that uh, Muslims is always expected to behave well, to have very good characters, to be modest, to be humble, especially within your family range. Uh, because uh, Umaru, as you, may know, as you may know, some Muslims are very kind, are very good when they are out of their family range. But when they come back in their houses, they behave like lions, like lions, which is not expected of Ramadan. Ramadan, you have to uh, show kindness to your spouse, to your family, to your children, to your parents, and uh, to be somebody providing all what you can provide. We know among us, there are people who can financially provide something, but there are some of us who cannot financially provide, but at least service-wide, they can serve their community, they, are serve, they can serve their families. So here is a month that all rewards are multiplied in thousands of thousands of thousands. So we don't need to be self-centered up to an extent that we are not ready to serve others who are not and who are not only our families, the neighbors, the extended families, even people that you don't know, even the animals, they expect to receive kindness and support from Muslims during this month. We have seen the change of dress code, especially both with, with, um, we have seen the change of dress code, both male and female. How significant is this in this month? Well, Umaru, it is very significant in the sense that the dress code that our ladies, girls are using now are more God-fearing and are more Islamic than the one they are using uh, during uh, this which are not Ramadan. But here, let me, still, let me put it this way. Uh, Ramadan is a month that all Muslims need to retrain themselves trying to just like a football team that is about to have a match you go to the camp you do more exercise you do more training so that when you get in the field you will perform well that is ramadan ramadan is a period that muslims need to reflect to recollect themselves try to remold themselves uh, up to an extent that the rest of the 11 months you will be able to behave yourself Islamically, you'll be able to behave yourself humanly 
so that people will know here is a moment behaving, here is a moment talking, here is a moment that is, the moment means a believer um, doing his things. So it should not be seasonal. Uh, to be good, it should not be seasonal. But you have to take it from somewhere. And the best time and the best uh, way to have it is during Ramadan. And Umar, you know as I know it, there are many people who stop smoking. They start trying to stop smoking during Ramadan because they are trying to rebuild themselves to become a better human beings. There are people who continuously giving out charity and they started it during Ramadan because Ramadan, whatever you start, in many cases you'll be able to continue it. So our ladies, our girls, our daughters, who try to change their coat of dress during Ramadan, we will pray for them that they will continue that continuously forever. Because it's a respectable dress, it's a dress that everybody loves to see your daughter, your mother, your wife uh, covering their bodies. I recently was privileged to see one uh, recording where a, an American Muslim trying to sew even the Christians, their norms, their mothers, the way they dress, they do this hijab. I'm not saying the kind of hijab that is happening in Afghanistan to seal all your face, put in niqab and everything, but at least to dress a very nice, respectable, religious and loose dress is always art to the dignity of all women, Umaru. We have seen people spitting all over, especially during this month of Ramadan. So is it that Islam, is it in Islam that people should not swallow their saliva or why do people think people well the saliva that one can swallow to destroy his fasting i don't think if anybody can keep that kind of saliva but you see it's a traditional belief that if you are fasting you should be spitting uh, that is very bad it's a very bad uh, practice uh, or some will even not wash their mouth all those things are just hearsay beliefs. A Muslim should be decent, should be clean all night, day long. That is what is expected of a Muslim. And splitting is another issue that can even spread disease, spread in infections, especially if you go to certain mosques, you see them having a, a pot like putting some sand in it and splitting it all over. That is completely bad and it should be stopped, Omar. Finally, you said most people take this period as a seasonal period. What will be your message to them? Those who change their dress code, those who pray, but after the Ramadan they will not pray, after the Ramadan they will not take out charity. What will be your message to them? Well, my message to them, I started a message to myself that is let us, let us uh, use this month as rebuilding our characters rebuilding our attitude, rebuilding and developing and updating our way of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there is no doubt, if we really give this month what it due, what it deserve, we will be able to continue it throughout the year. That's why it is recommended to pray extra prayers called Traweeh, or here we call it Nafila. Nafila is an Arabic word, Nawafilul Khair, that is to do extra good things. And those extra good things that you may do during Ramadan, in many cases, if Allah accepts your uh, effort, you will be able to continue it. And that's what we are praying for. So my advice to them and the business community to be sympathetic and to empathize with those who don't have the price. Because I understand that the prices are very expensive. Just yesterday I went to buy some onions, potatoes and the like, but uh, it's almost double of the prices. And I know it's because of the Ramadan, because they believe everybody will buy enough. So I am asking the business community also to try to work hard and hard and to know charity will never destroy a mu'min wealth. As the Prophet said, he said, giving out charity can only be additional to you, can increase your income, but will never reduce it. So really, the hoarding, uh, the commodities that are highly needed during Ramadan so that you can raise up your price is completely un-Islamic and we should not allow what used to happen with the previous regime to come back again forcing our businessmen 
to sell things in the uh, recommended price by government. They need to recommend price for themselves and they need to be very much uh, sympathetic with their community and their neighbor. Thank you so much, Imaru. Thank you, Omaru. Hope to see you again and again. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You need to take us a picture and post this thing on the Facebook before. And say what? I want to say Imam Babadis interview with Omaru. My name is Tenenjite, reporter and news anchor for State TV. Well, I choose to use Avicel 4G and this is the reason why. Because it has the fastest network and also the widest coverage. So yeah, I have two phones. One on my phone with Avicel 4G network. This is another identical phone with another 4G network. I'll show you why I choose Avicel with a speed test. Let's go. Wow! With Aficel 4G, I'm having full coverage with up to 68 megabytes per second. With the other network, I'm getting 20 megabytes per second. This is proof that Aficel 4G is the real 4G with the widest coverage and the fastest speed. By far, the fastest. Hurry now and go replace your Aficel SIM cards with the real 4G SIM card. Where Aficel goes, no one has the speed to follow.